me. What about you? It's I am not hearing you. The word of God. The word of God is sufficient. Our precious Father, we thank you, we bless you, we worship you. We exhort thee because you are a good God. Each chance of days, we thank you for this privilege you've given us to gather before you. We thank you so much for you have decided, oh God, to bless us today. We thank you, oh God, because we are swimming and enjoying the unlimited victory you've given us, oh God. Thank you so much because it is your will for us to live. It is your will for us to conquer. And it's your will for us to succeed and be with you on the last day. Hence, we are asking that you come and speak to us this morning. Talk to me and talk through me. Holy Spirit of God, I surrender to you. Speak to me, O God. Empty me of myself and let your children be blessed this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, help me to speak you and not myself. Let every emotion die and help me to be in spirit completely. In Jesus Christ, most powerful name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a word of God or a brief message this morning by the grace and mercy of God titled Knowing What Jesus Christ Require of You. Knowing What Jesus Christ Require of You. Knowing what Jesus wants you to do. Who Jesus wants you to be. Where Jesus wants you to go. And where Jesus wants you not to go. And before, you must know what Christ requires of you. You must first of all know who Jesus is for you to know what Jesus wants from you you must first of all know who Jesus is what he loves and what he don't love what he want to see and what he don't want to see if you are able to know him the all side of him as a merciful father as a consuming fire as a patient God as a God that is also impatient in some ways if you are able to collate all this you balance it then you will be able to know what he wants from you Except you know him. You cannot really know what he needs or wants from you. Even if you know, you will be making mistakes. You wouldn't know when he's angry or when he's laughing. If you only know Jesus as a merciful God, you will be serving him and be misbehaving. But if you also know the other side of him, as a consuming fire, as God who can also be angry, as God who can also react, 
then you will know how to maintain yourself. The reason why most of us are misbehaving today, the reason why the church is the way it is today, is because we are only told of the merciful, patient part of hell. No matter what you do, God is merciful. He cannot do anything to you. The other side of him, that is so dangerous, that no one must cross the line I go into, is not revealed to me and you. Hence, some people, or most people, serving foolishly, ignorantly, and at the end, they meet the other side of him. Brethren, if there's anything the Lord wouldn't want to see in you or see in me, no matter how we pretend for it, let me use that word please, no matter how we assume to be holy is unfruitfulness. Unfruitfulness. The Lord hate to see you be unfruitful. The Lord hate to see me and you be unproductive. God is so much impatient to follow an unproductive person. Just as no company we hire an unproductive employee. Every company what was that all their employees are productive. They are all fruit leaders. They are income coming from them. No matter how you are eloquent in what you say you are doing in that company, no matter the, the, the certificate you tender, if at the end your productivity is not in unison, is not aligned with the, your certificate, with your certificate and all, you will be sacked. The same thing with God. And another thing you must know is that this God is a God that can let, that, that is, is an impartial God. It's a God that needs your diligence in everything. That need you to be upright and righteous with him at all time. Hence, the Bible told us in the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. There, verse 1, there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifice. At this moment, Jesus knew their heart. He knew that people always assume that bad things always happen to bad people. That's why when Christ made that man that was born blind, the apostles asked him, Who sinned? Is it the father, the mother, or this person? Why? Because human beings always believe that bad thing happened to bad people and he told them no neither had this man or the parents but that the glory of god might be revealed in him now verse 2 of luke 13 and jesus answering said unto them because he know their heart to them they are free they are right to be with him no evil can be for them and Jesus told them, Supposing ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffer such things. I know your heart. That is your assumption. Verse 3. And he answered them, I tell you, nay. Notwithstanding, you are the one so close to me, report to me. Except you that is reporting to me, you that is preaching, 
you that is judging any other person, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. It doesn't matter if you are following me. It doesn't matter if you are my information officer. That is the God you should know. Except ye repent, you shall likewise perish. And he move further in verse 4. Or oh, those 18, even though you told me this one, I already know what is happening. Before you start telling me the one that the beauty bridge and the bridge collapse for them, you also assume that they have sinned. Let me quickly tell you now. Uh, those 18 upon whom the Torah in Salem fell and slew them, thinking that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. Five, I tell you. Ye may, but except the emphasis was on the people that came to report to him. I tell you, nay, except ye repent, ye shall all, with exemption of nobody, be you a pastor, be you an apostle, be you a chorister, except we all repent. We shall likewise all go to hell. Except we all begin to know what God requires of me and you. And do that diligently. I tell the truth. No matter what, no matter how close we think we are to him. At the end, he will tell you, I never knew you. The Bible told me and you. In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 32 to 33. Say, Fear ye not, therefore, ye are, verse 32. Well, let me start from verse 31. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. 32. Whosoever, therefore, whosoever, therefore, regardless of your position and your possession, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, he will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, he will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This is the God that you know. Is the God. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. I tell you the truth. The he that kill with the sword shall die with the sword. If you deny him, he will deny you. If you deny him, don't say because it's a merciful God, he will also deny you. Deny him is not only when they put knife on your neck. It's not only when they put knife on your neck. And you say, eh, okay, eh, Jesus or eh, or die. It's not only that. If there's anything the Lord expected you to do, and you refuse to do it, you are denying Him. For example, if you see that this of the Lord going the other way, and you have the ability, God has given you the ability to do it. For example, there are no chairs in, the, in your church, in your, in your um, branch. And the Lord has blessed you with money to buy those chairs. And God expects you to release that money and buy that chair. And you refuse to do it, you have denied him. If there's anything you ought to have done for him. And heaven are rejoicing that you are available to do it. And you refuse to do it. At that moment, you have, you have denied him. And the Lord is saying, he will deny you. Another example. The Lord is blessing you. 
whenever you want to do your own thing, you can go to the market and buy expensive things for yourself. Maybe, for example, you are receiving five thousand pounds a month, for example. Will this please help me? And whenever you want to do anything for yourself, you lavish the money upon yourself. And whenever you want to pay tight, for example, for that from that five thousand or whatever money you are receiving, you put it down. Oh God, how can I re remove maybe five hundred, a whole five hundred euro or pounds or naira for my money as tight? Okay, God will understand. You now remove two hundred naira or two hundred euro and pay tight. And say, God, understand, you have denied him of his right. I tell you the truth. No matter what, any other thing you are not doing, on the last day, God will deny you. As many, the Lord have blessed. And God bless them. That he may also be blessed through them. They are able to do anything they want to do. But when it comes to God's own, they will withdraw. I tell you the truth. The Lord says to tell you, on that day, as you deny him of his right in you, he said, I will also deny you. Brethren, you're being old or young, poor, or rich, is not a factor before God. God is a respecter of nobody. For you to be able to know what God requires of you, and to do it diligently well, you must first of all ask yourself, does God fear faith? If I miss it, can he kill me? Like some children. Say, hey, I have grown now. My father can no longer beat me. For that reason, I have to start misbehaving. You can never be able to serve God well and profitably to enter his kingdom if you have not settled it within yourself. As a watchman now, if I misbehave, can this God tell me, shift, let Pastor Samson enter? No matter how my exalted seat, this God I'm serving, will he be bold enough to tell me, for this thing you have done, you have brought shame to me, shift it. And if you have concluded that this God cannot do it, then you are bound to misbehave. But if you know that the God you are serving is a respecter of nobody, if you let be 200 years old, woman or man, you are still a child of God. You are still a baby in his hand. Even compared to those 2,000 something years that he came to spend on earth here and left, not as a God, now that he has been existing forever, just let's say a man of 2000 and something years compared to you, 200 years or 100 years, you are thinking you are an old man. So, God will respect for your old age. No, your old age is not a factor before God. A child of eight years. And a man of 200 years, they are the same in the eyes of the Lord. That's why we all are advised to humble ourselves before God. And let me also tell you something. Don't say because you are a poor man, because of your poor uh, uh, lifestyle, you have nothing. So no matter what you do, God will show you mercy on that day. No, no. The Lord will not say because you suffer so much on earth here. You were so poor. 
you were not having anything, you were wretched, because of that, come to me with sin. No. Your poverty will not save you on that day. In your poverty, God forbid, you must live right. In your riches, you must live right before him. Nothing is a factor before God. We say, because of this, I allow you to come to me and say no. That's why. You now, when he was on earth here as a man, as a young man, himself and the apostle, maybe they were, they were almost the same, you know, the same age. Follow them. They all think, ah, this man is, uh, you know, is, is a normal, it's just normal person like us. Peter and the rest, they never knew who he is. Until after his ascension, their eyes begin to open. That's why in the book of Acts, chapter 10, 34 to 35, then Peter opened his mouth. When will your mouth be open? When will you realize? When will you know the other side of this God? Then Peter opened his mouth. And said of a truth, this is not the God I used to know before. This is not the that same Jesus I know that time. That said, you can only preach to the Jews, you can only go this side. No, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Do you know this? If you and I know this, this our shoulder will bring it there. It doesn't matter the exotic car you are driving. In, even inside that car, you, you will so badly drive that car. In your wealth and in your riches, knowing what Peter knew, you will humble yourself. And you will make sure your life is aligned and in line with him. Verse 35. But in every nation, he that feared him, do you fear God? Do you fear God to the point that as you are receiving your salary, I say, God, what do you want me to do with it? Lord, what are you saying about this, my children? Lord, where am I missing it? Where am I supposed to fit in that I am not in? What is that thing I'm supposed to be doing in church that on the last day you will tell me is because of this thing I brought you to that church. I brought you to that home for this. You did not do it. If you really know that in every nation, he that fear him and walk righteously is accepted of him. Is accepted with him. And if you are not in line with this, if you don't fear him and walk righteously, he will deny you. You will be denied. All your dancing, all your singing, all your preaching, all your whatever show up you are doing, on that day you will be exposed. When the Lord will tell you, I never knew you. And may that not be your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For God is not a respect of person. Romans 2, 11. For there is no respect of persons with God. Mark no solution We better know this. The God we serve on this mountain. We can respect each other. Good. Respecting each other, not when you are living wrongly. In quotes, as an elder, I must give you that elderly respect. Yes. I must give you every respect that belongs to you. But not when you are dishonoring God. Not when you are away from the line. I better let you know now so that a day will not come when you can never be able to amend your way again. In your riches, I will tell you where you have missed it. 
your old age, I will tell you when you are, so that a time will not come. You will, you will not tell me. I thought he said he is a watchman. Why did he not tell me? God is not a respecter of persons. There is no respect of persons with God. I tell you this now. So that even I myself, I will know how to comport myself. I always tell us on this mountain. We are in a school. All the pastors are our teachers. But a day is coming. Both the teacher, me that is teaching you right now, and you the student, we all will write the same exam together. The teacher and the teacher, the teacher, we all will sit down together and write the same exam. Then we will know. Right now, I am a watchman. <laughs> Very good. He is a, a, res, a resident pastor. Very good. And you are the choir mistress. Very good. And somebody who is not a choir mistress, who is not an apostle, if you do the right thing on that day, you will write the exam and pass you that told them will fail. And then you will know that God is not a respecter of person. And I tell you the truth. So many pastors, so many men, women that were so puffed up after they break their last breath, they realize <laughs> our pride and or etienne. May the Lord deliver us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why, people of God, we must understand that God that we are serving is the God that will never allow marketers in his kingdom. When I say marketers, people who trade in his church, people who misbehave in his church. He proved it when he was on earth here. That is the only time you see that Jesus showed his other side to the people. He used came to chase them out of the church. All their money changes and all their money is thrown all away. That is the God is there. If you are somebody who sees the church of God as a place where you can do anything, you are you are wrong. You are wrong. It's not a place where we can misbehave. No. The Bible says in Mark 11, 14 to 17. And they came to Jerusalem. And Jesus went into the temple just as he's here right now. You know what's something? And Peter told, no, uh, Paul told, uh, it's not Timothy. Some, some people sin go ahead and the Lord treats it before time. And some people all come after. I always tell the Lord Jesus Christ, please let my sin go ahead of me. So that if he flog, he flog me now. Whatever discipline, do it now. Now that I can still repent. Now that I can say, Father, please have mercy upon me. Not the Lord will come with me at my back. And when I shall be presented before you, say, my son, God forbid. Look at all God forbid. That's why when you are somebody that God always corrects you, please rejoice. Before you say anything, my son, don't say that to me. My daughter, the way you misbehave just now, I am not happy. But if the Lord closes eyes against your sin, it means it's coming after you. Tell God he corrected them here. And the Lord came, and they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. And withdrew, and, sorry, and overthrew the table of the money changers. And the seats of them that so do. Will you ever think that do, that so that humble man? Let me use that word. 
that easy going man, quiet man can do this. That's why you will also you will not know what he will do to you after now. Who can tell you that Jesus will throw? He would have said, "My people, why are you doing this now?" Eh? It's okay, okay. Eh, you know, don't do it again. You know, no. And that is the God you know Him for. The Bible says, "He show His disciplinary Father nature in Him." He said, "I would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel." through the table just as it will not so far you to bring that your character to the church just as it will not so far you that your misbehaving attitude that your not sure that attitude they possess back home if your husband your wife are last it okay if I'm misbehaving, my wife decided to leave me. Okay. But not God. Not God. God will not allow it. So, you must, I must, we must confront ourselves and ask ourselves a question. What are those things that the Lord will not allow? When I say church, he will not allow it in his presence. I'm not just saying, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Brad is there now, Pastor uh, God said, will not allow you to come. No, it's more than that. God will not allow you to dwell in His presence. I was teaching my children yesterday in the morning. According to uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 15, no, Psalms 15. You cannot come to God. Who can abide in the holy place of God? Yes. Except you are holy, you are righteous, you cannot dwell in the presence of God. It's not possible. What I'm preaching is more than just coming inside the church. It's more than that. You cannot walk and live with God if you are a careless sinner. Just somebody who, who, who celebrates and loves to sin. You will not. You'll go back home, read that place very well. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 17. And he thought, saying unto them, is, not, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye, you have made it a den of thief. A den of thief. You will steal his tithe. You will steal his offering. The tithe that belongs to him, you will not pay him. The offering that belongs to him, you will not give him. Even the one he gave to you to support his work, you will not do it. The one he gave to you to support the less perfect, you will not do it. Are you expecting to accommodate you? You are a thief. He will not accommodate you. Because you are a trader trading with his money. To your own doom. That's why we all must reconsider our ways. The Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brethren, for you and I to be able to do what God wants you and I to do, to know what God requires of me and you, which is holiness and righteousness. We all know it. First Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. Matthew chapter 5, verse, uh, verse 40, 40, uh, 48. We all know it. Do not require holiness, but how can you be holy when the things you need to do as a holy person, it's not be done. Brethren, the Lord is not ready to tolerate unproductive children, as I said from the beginning. If you are unproductive, he will destroy you. There's one thing I've come to understand. 
the Lord Jesus Christ is so impatient when it comes to unproductive. Because to when you are not productive. Please, I hope in the Robert branch, I hope there's a uh, it's a bit there. I don't know if those old men are hearing me. Pastor God sent. Is somebody interpreting in the Robert branch? Bra Brother Ose, is he the church? Please, if you are hearing me, you Robert branch, please wave your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise so God. let me assume they are hearing. No. I will not assume. Pastor Gossett. Pastor Gossett, please, where are you? Where is Brother Osset? Is he, is he interpreting? Hallelujah. Good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, as I said, the Lord is not ready to accommodate or tolerate an unpro unproductive children. When you are not productive, you cannot live with this God. That's why he shows example in Luke chapter 13, 6 to 9. He spake a parable. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Seven. Then said he unto the dresser of, it, of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I came seeking fruit on this fig tree and find not caught it down. You have been born again for the past six years. No soul have entered God's kingdom. No soul have entered the church through you. You have been in a church for more than a year now. No one. You have said, ah, Pastor Gosen, Pastor Ferdinand, this is a soul that came to please. I want this soul to be nurtured. When you come to financial productivity, you are not there. Come to evangelical productivity, you are not there. And you expect not to be caught down, you'll be caught down. Now, that's why you must repent. And he said unto them, the dresser, Behold, these three years I came seeking fruit on this fig tree and see not. And find not, caught it down. Man, every source is an axe that is present with you. It's an axe that the Lord placed around you. If you are not productive, God damn. And why combat it the ground? Why are you sitting down in the church there unproductive? Why are you allowing my Holy Spirit to follow you in and out, guiding you all productive? Why are you allowing me to, should I use the word now, waste my presence with you, all productive? You are comparing the ground. The people see you as a member of Mount No Solution. Why you are there all productively? Nine. And verse 8, and he answered and said unto him, This is the grace that you and I have been enjoying ever since now. You and I have been enjoying the grace the Lord is about to talk, say now, speak about now. And he answered, said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dump it. The Lord is digging about you now with this word of God now. It's reminding you your last is now. It's digging about you now so that you go at night from now on and be productive. <clears throat> Verse 9. And if it bear fruit well, it's all 
about you. It's all about me. If it bear fruit well, that means we will leave it. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Do you know when your grace will elapse, you don't know? Do you know when the Lord shall give God help for that axe to pull you down? You don't know. That's why we all must reevaluate our lives. And go back and ask ourselves a question. Am I productive? Am I a fruit bearer? I have been in this church for years now, for months now. What have I done? Where is my harm in this church? Whenever God is counting people that their hand is in that branch, where will your hand be seen? And not in a red branch now, they are doing the ties in the floor. It's your hand there. I pour, pour this, this one, I will not involve myself in it. Let me see if my people will do it. I need to pass out to please. time, just go and give them some of these things. But let me see what they will do. Where is God seeing your hand in the ministry? Where is your productivity in that island branch? In UK branch, in Ebuma branch, where is your productivity? What will God see and say, because of this, thing, I will stand and fight for this, my son? Where am I productive? Where are you? Productive. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. Now, the Lord, as I draw the curtain, the Lord expects you and I to be productive and fruitful all the time. All the time. You know what the Bible says in the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 18? If you were righteous yesterday and decided to be unrighteous now, all your righteousness, all your righteousness is forgotten. Is forgotten. Then God will say, Your good deed yesterday will not stand for you if you decided to be bad today. That's why when you start, continue, as it is written in uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. Lord, help me. Let me quickly. Colossians 1, tw yes, 23. Let me start from verse 22. And the Lord, and in the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. 33. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled. When things were good last year, you were paying your tithe. When things become bad, you stop your time, but you are still eating. You are still drinking. You are still buying clothes. When things to you were good, you used to support the work of God. When it's okay, we are going to Ireland, we are going to wherever, you go. But now, you think that the money has shaken, shaken a little bit. You, you are no more concerned about the things of God again. You have withdrawn your tithe. You have withdrawn your gift. You, have, you don't longer support the things of God again. You used to go and help offers. Because these are not the way you supposed to, it to be. You withdraw, you withdraw help in the offers. But you are still buying for yourself. You are still enjoying yourself. But you have attacked the one of Jesus. I tell you the truth. All that you have done before is forgotten. I'm not the one saying it. Study the word of God. If ye continues, if ye continue in well doing, grounded and settled, it's better you even stop your own and do God's own. That to stop God's own 
and you are doing your own. The Lord help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. No, if I don't tell us all this, I don't want to pet us to destruction. The Lord Himself asked me two days ago. This message I've been prepared since two days ago. Tell my children the plain, plain truth. I am a hater of improductivity. Matthew chapter 21, 19 to 20. Matthew 21, 18 to 20. Now, in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered, just as God is hunger for souls now. Just as Jesus is hungry right now. There are so many things that ought to have been done. He's hungry for it and expecting that that my son, that my daughter is available to do it. And he expects that you and I will always be available. You are like a tree planted by the riverside. According to Psalm chapter 1, he planted you as a tree that brings fruit in season and out of season. In God, there's no seasonal productivity. God help Emmanuel. In Jesus, there's no seasonal, I was good yesterday, today I am not good again. No. Yesterday, I was not a barbiter. And today, I don't know what happened. You better know what happened. No? Because that one, the fire of yesterday cannot roast the corn of today. You have to blow it and make sure it's still burning. Verse 19 of Matthew 21. And when he saw a fig tree, just as he saw you, some things were going wrong in the church. And he entered, he saw you. There might be other fig trees there, but he knew that you are the fig tree you want to pluck from. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing. Let me tell you something. Is God not God? Is Christ not God? Is God. He knows everything. He knows there are seasons for everything. But this message was because of me and you. He used this tree as a deterrent for me and you. For me and you to know that God is not a seasonal God when it comes to you produ producing. And when he saw the fig tree, in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee. Henceforward, forever, and presently, the fig tree with that away. And if you read it in Luke, the Bible says it was not yet the season of the fig tree. Oh God have no season of production. God will not say, okay, the season of uh, of winning souls, he said this, no. The season of knowing what to do and doing it, no. The Bible says, he that knoweth in a, in a uh, James four verse seventeen I said about he that knoweth the right thing to do and doeth it not to him is a sin. Twenty of Matthew twenty one and when the disciples saw it, they marvel, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? If the Lord can deal with the fig tree, who can who have no power? Over itself to produce, it must only produce seasonally. And Jesus Christ was hungry and still caused that victory. What about you that had the power to produce? You are expecting to let you be. No, the Lord expects you to be productive at all times. 
do not expect you to always do what you used to do in the church, regardless of whatever is happening. If that is happening, can still make you bash yourself. Can still allow you to go to the market to trade. Can still allow you to cook for your husband. Can still allow you to go and shop for your children. Why don't that thing allow you to do the things of God? A man of God called me yesterday, my brother. I, the place was noisy. I said, Where are you going to? He said, uh, I'm on my way out. I said, Where are you going to? Is it not raining there? He said, It's raining. But if I can go to my work in the rain, <laughs> so I, I have to also go to evangelism. You know, he said, Reno. I said, Father, this is the message. If I can go to my job, wear a coat, go to my job, the law is, is seeing it. I feel I have to also go to evangelism inside the rain. That is what God is telling us. I pinch myself. I say, Father, help me here. This is the message you are preaching to us now. That's what the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, 11 or verse 1, or 12, no, 12, verse 1. There will be cloud of witnesses for that day. That you are saying, because of this, I cannot serve God anymore. It's making somebody else to serve God as never before. And my business has shrunk. I cannot uh, give again. I cannot pay that again. And somebody that is always even worse is doing it more than you. <laughs> Read it. See, Hebrews chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside foolishness. I paraphrase. Let us lay aside all productiveness. Let us lay aside whatever. I will make God tell you on either day, I never knew you. Man, there is no situation. That can warranty our productivity before God. As I draw the curtain now, brethren, to be fruitful, sorry, to be unfruitful and to be a waster is the same crime before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you are a waster and unfruitful, it is the same thing. To you, souls are living the ministry because of your character. And uh, through you, souls are not coming. <laughs> the same thing. You are going to the same hell. You are not. You are not bringing souls. You think, ah, and God no. And the other one, and now it's even the worst. It's using the character to take away. So I tell you the truth. The one that is not bringing and the one that is taking away, both of them are in the red book of God. Matthew. I stop with you, girlfriend. Matthew chapter 25, 24 to 30. Then he, then he which had received the one talent came and said, if you start from the beginning, you understand where I'm coming from. As he was going away, he gave their talent according to their, to their several abilities. The Lord knows what you can do. He knows what he has blessed you with. He knows my ability. He knows your ability. The Lord will never expect from you what he has not given you. He will only expect what he has given to you. And remember, to whom much is given, much is expected. Then, after the one that are productive, I give you account. Ah, sir, if five times you get to me, I also produce five. He said, now you are done well. Because of this, I have more kingdom to take care of. The one that has two times also came. Now, to you now, you have come now. To me now, if we are unproductive, then he which had received the one talent, 
came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou had not so, and gathering where thou had not strewed. This is exactly what you are saying now. This is what we tell him on that day. Lord, I will not pay that because I know uh, you, uh, you will eat it. I know uh, Pastor Sassy will eat the money. Uh, and they, there was a program I refused to give because I don't even know what they will do with the money. Can you stand before God and give that crazy excuse that day? Can you stand before God? The duty I'm supposed to perform because of man, because what I thought will happen. Not that you really know. I thought, I think they would have. That's why I did not. <laughs> you can't tell God that. It will be too late to say, let me go back. I will even increase it. Times 20 to our pay is over. Your body is decayed already. Lord, help Emmanuel. Verse 25. And I was afraid and went and hide the talent in the earth. Lo, mm -hmm. dear, thou hast that is thine. <laughs> this man was not a waster. He kept what God gave to him. But God is not looking for what they are giving to you. He's looking for the increase in it. Is looking for the fruit. The Lord is no more looking for the seed to get to you. He's looking for the fruit that the seed bear. As a chorister, what are you doing? Verse 27. Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, Wicked as slothful servant. Thou knowest that I reap where I sweat not, and gather where I have not stirred. Seven. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I shall have received my own with usury. With our border with interest. 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents, the productive servant. Remember, he was giving five. He brought ten back. And God was saying, Take that one and give to him. Remember what the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse, this is verse 10 or verse 11. Verse 10. Keep that which thou hast. Keep that. Verse 11. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take the crown. From the day I read, the first day, day I read this place, I said, you mean crown is exchangeable? Somebody's crown can be given to somebody else? Father, help me. Keep that heart. Make sure you are doing everything to keep your salvation so that somebody will not take your place. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. 29. For unto everyone that had shall be given. And he shall have abundance. But from him that had not shall be taken away. Even that which you have, your salvation will be taken from you because of your improductivity. Because of your nonchalant attitude. You think you are doing for Pastor Fernand. You think, ah, if the church grew now, they'll say, ah, and the, 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 the glory will be given to Pastor Fernand, it will be given to Pastor Sunday this year. <laughs> no, no. You are fighting the church, thinking, ah, uh, if uh, if church, God forbid, fall, and uh, they'll say, Pastor, this is Pastor Fender, Pastor, and uh, God said, did not do well. As a Christian, you are not you are not putting effort. Even the ones that are putting effort, you are doing everything to make sure they are not able. So that 
When they say, hey, look at that branch, and what is there? And what is that man not going to do? You are the one God will ask. God brought you to the man of God so that through you, the church will be eleva elevated. He has his own duty. The man of is evil uh, because of the Lord that so he helped us so much. We go to evangelism. In this place, we, we men of God go to evangelism. In many places, all they do is to set footmen, footmen to go for evangelism. But here, yeah, we involve ourselves in everything. But you, that the Lord has brought to make this easy for the man of God, you are even making it hard for him. Ah, ah, this bank is not growing. And the man of God is not doing well. You are the one not doing well. How many people have you brought since you came in? The Lord will ask you. And he said, if that time there is no production from you, there's a problem. Can you face the wrath of God? Nobody can face the wrath of God. Now, verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant. Hey, my yabrakanda ya. And cast ye the unprofitable member. The grand kumbara member. Into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Remember, this man did not fornicate. Oh. This man did not commit adultery. This man did not steal from anybody. This man did not lie. This man was not a, 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 a first star. But because he was unproductive or improductive, he was cast into outer darkness. Now I ask you, what makes you think you will escape it? What makes you think you will escape it? All you do, you come every Sunday. During the week, you don't preach to anybody. You don't talk to anybody. You are even happy that it's only that it's the church. You are even happy that it's only you and your family that is there. I tell you the truth. The outer darkness is waiting for you. The things of God is not the way it's supposed to be. And the Lord has blessed you. Your shop is doing well. The Lord is the grace of God is making your business to grow. Everything is going well. And you are not in turn blessing God with it. <laughs> I pity you. As I said before, some, some of us, your maybe you receive at the end of the month in your business, you you receive one million naira, for example, as in as a blessing, as a I don't know say as in, is it interesting to call it as gain, one million. Hey, how can I pay that out of one million? Okay, let me just tell the church I give church fifty thousand naira. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not tight. That's why I say pay that is a debt. No, I don't I don't preach about that at all. But this is the message you gave to me. I'm preaching, I'm trying to touch every area. They don't say give tight. Pay that is a debt that you owe. If the Lord give you hundred million. Give him one tenth of his own. Just one tenth out of it. Somebody who is able to give you hundred and is telling you give me one out of it. You are still stingy from it. And you expect to enter kingdom where everything is in abundance. No. You will be cast into the outer darkness. I want every one of us to reevaluate ourselves. Where is God angry with me? What are those things the Lord expects of me? 
that I'm not doing? Where am I supposed to fit in in the church? Everybody in the church must have something doing. Nobody must be idle. Little, but, be, but that little, make sure you do it well. The church of God, the kingdom of God is so big that everyone must have something doing. Start it today. Start being productive from now on. And some of you that heaven was rejoicing over before, and you have withdrawn from it now, your case is the worst. You know what you used to do those days? That heaven, you know, say, ah, this is my beloved daughter. I remember, heaven, baby, miss. somebody, I am here. The Lord was telling me about somebody in Ireland. And the other is not only how they're doing it. But God singled her out to tell me that why did God say that? Day? Not that because she's holy. For God to let me know that the least thing can be recognized by Him. The least thing you are doing that nobody knows. But because you have made yourself available for it, heaven will recognize it. What are you doing for God? What am I doing? I want us to be on our feet and ask ourselves questions. What am I doing? Or what was I doing that I'm not doing again? Where is my productivity in God's kingdom? Where is my hand in this church? Look around, look around, look around the ministry. Where is my hand here? Where has God hold my hand to do something? If there's no place, I ask God for mercy. I say, Father, I'm available now. Lord, have mercy upon me. You will not say you did not hear it. By the grace of God, I don't preach anyhow. I try to listen before I come and preach. Lord, if I am not be productive, have mercy upon me. If I was, and somebody brainwashed me out of it, or I decided not to do it again. Papa, my case is the worst. Have mercy upon me. I am back to you again. Open your mouth and pray to God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Cry to God. Jesus Christ, may we pray. Amen. Let someone help me read Mark for clarity. Mark chapter 11. Mark 11. If you do, you have me a Mark 11. Start from verse, uh, from verse 11 to 14. Mark 11. Yes, ma'am. From verse 1, sir. Start from 10. Let's see. From verse 10. Blessed be the kingdom of our father, David, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. No. Go to, go to 12. Go to 12. Go to 12, ma'am. Verse 12. And on the morrow, yes. when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. 
13. And see the fig tree afar of having this. He came. If happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to eat, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of fig was not yet. Mm. Verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto him, No man eat fruit of this hereafter forever. And his disciples had it. Amen. Amen. Yes. And if you read further, the Bible says, And the tree withered. He said, And for it, for the time of fig was not yet, and yet it cost the tree. When God expects anything from you, you will be impatient. Not you. I pray God will help us open our eyes. We will not say, God is unjust. No. The God don't, don't know everything. He knows that it was not yet time. Why we God that knows everything? He knows, but he want to prove to Ferdinand, he want to prove to a man that I am the God of all seasons. Peter, do you see this? I want you to be productive at all times. I want us to pray, Papa, every spirit of seasonal productivity. I'm cold in the morning, hot in the evening. I'm good yesterday, bad today. That spirit of seasonal productivity. I say, jump out of me and die, Father, make me productive at all times in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Amen. Lastly, we're going to pray. Lastly, for the time, there are people who this message is not strange to them. They know what they ought to be doing, but situation is not allowing them. A sister coming some days ago, this sister was lamenting. I could really feel the pain in her. I'm supposed to be doing this. I cannot do it anymore. I have a lot of debt around me. See, I cannot do it anymore. Father, please have mercy upon me. I know this sister was really in pain. Know that she doesn't do it. But situation have withdrawn her hands from what she ought to have been doing. I'm going to pray as many. But I tell you the truth, on the last day, God had no excuse. You get me? There's no excuse. Now that you are seeing the body, there's excuse. After the body, no way. As many that situation are sending to hell, as many that are supposed to be productive, but situation have caged them. Problem have caged them. And God is lamenting over the situation. Father, you are able to do all things. Arise in your mercy. Deliver them from that situation. And make them productive again as you desire of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray. Amen. Father, <laughs> Deliver them, O God. I use that your daughter as a part of contact. Father, she lamented. Father, have mercy upon her. Have mercy upon her. And do what you can do. Revive her. Restore that she will be able to do what she needs to do for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ. May we have prayed. And as we have prayed, by the mercy and grace of God, 
so shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And today, the Lord has given us up, including you, that pray this message, <laughs> unlimited victory over every spirit is making us to be productive in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Every parasite in me, parasite in you, eating our productivity from the Lord. The Lord God Almighty destroyed them today in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you out there? You are not born again. You have heard a message. Remember the Bible says in John 3 verse 18, as many that believe in, they are saved. But as many that did not believe and that refused him, a lot of God is upon them. So I think it's before now, a lot of God is upon you. But right now, open the door. Romans, sorry, Revelation 3 verse 20. The Lord has just knocked at your door now, open for him. Confess your sins before him. Allow him into your life and confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. If you have done this genuinely today, I can boldly say you are not born again. You are not on your way to heaven now. And the grace of God to go now to live for him, to be productive at all times, be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So please, now that you have enrolled into the household of faith in Christ, I want you to move a step further. You will need to be baptized by a marshal. You need to be buried with him. Colossians chapter 2, verse 12. You need to be associated with him in his baptism. So please, very soon, the man of God will call your number. Call that number. Or if you are in any of the branches, the Nile branch, or any of the branches, Eboma, please meet the man of God there. And the Lord will use it to do the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Our precious Father, I thank you, I bless you, I worship you. I exhort thee for this great love you have for us, O oh God. Lord, you are not ready to hide anything from us, O oh God, that on the last day we'll be saying, Ah, I was not told. Father, you are exposing everything that the devil that would have challenged us on the last day with. Lord, we have heard you. The grace to go now. I practicalize it. We all receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, I bring myself to you, Lord. I that you have used, Lord, I don't want to end up as a, as a symbol like other pastors. Lord, Lord help us so God to be the doer of the world you are using to preach. Likewise, everyone we are preaching to in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Father, is there any way I miss it? Have mercy upon me. Forgive me, O God, and perfect me. Thank you, Abba Father, because you have done it. In Jesus Christ, mighty name, I have prayed without given. Amen. Amen. And if you know this word came to you, for you, to bless you, I want you to jam those hands to the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So your mic, your mic is not, it's not working. It's not working well. Though. Amen. Amen. It's better, but try to increase it a little bit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen.